It was the largest and most destructive conflict in all of history. Germany invaded Poland on September 1, 1939, thus starting World War II. An estimated 40 to 50 million people died during World War II. But in order to make sure nothing like that ever happens again, we must learn from our past. We still feel the effects of such a large-scale conflict today, and we're still finding new information about it all the time. From a newly found plane wreck at the bottom of a lake to a Nazi bunker in the most unexpected of places, here are 20 most incredible discoveries from World War II. Number 20. Nazi Eagle Pulled from Sea 75 Years After It Sunk this was one of the remains recovered from the bottom of the Bay of Montevideo, Uruguay, where the frame of the imposing battleship Admiral Graf Spree rests, sunk in 1939. After the defeat by the British in the Battle of the Rio de la Plata, which took place in Punta del Este, southeast of Uruguay, on December 13, 1939, the German ship went to the port of Montevideo to repair the damage suffered and bury its fallen in combat. However, the outcome was different. After the 72 hours set as the deadline by the Uruguay Uruguayan authorities to leave the Montevideo coast, Captain Hans Langsdorff blew up the ship on December 17th to prevent it from falling into enemy hands. Now, the eagle is going to be sold in auction. However, the possibility that the Nazi eagle that generated terror in the Atlantic Ocean during the first months of the Second World War could fall into the wrong hands has created alerts from organizations such as the Simon Wiesenthal Center, which warned of the risk of turning that object into a cult fetish desired by neo-Nazi movements. In this regard, the Simon Wiesenthal Center Center stated that in its resolution, justice has not provided any deference for the institutions and individual providers whose objective would be clearly identified as pedagogical, extracting the lessons of the Holocaust and other genocides. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19 Discovery of an ME-262 jet inside of a bomb crater on October 23, 2014, members of the Dillon Air Base Museum recovered a rare World War II Messerschmitt Me-262 jet fighter accidentally unearthed during an excavation near a former German-occupied airbase in the Netherlands. The aircraft was shot down on September 12, 1944 and was buried in an existing bomb crater near the airfield. Using Allied bomb craters to bury rubbish and other material was common practice, and burying the Me-262 was something natural. The Allies' advance was fast, and the the plane was an engineering gem that should not be left in the hands of the enemy in case they captured the airfield. It seems that another reason for burying it was to avoid Nazi intelligence services, because it could have been shot down by German anti-aircraft fire. The plane was shot down over the nearby town of Elden and flown to the airbase for burial. Few examples of the world's first operational jet fighter remain today, and enthusiasts have reason to believe the recently discovered ME-262 may be the first production airframe to roll off the line. Large sections of the aircraft, including the nose, one wing, engine, and two 30mm cannons, were pulled from the ground largely intact. Number 18. Graf Zeppelin one of the great enigmas of World War II has been revealed in the waters of the Baltic Sea. The only aircraft carrier of the Third Reich, the one baptized as Graf Zeppelin, whose whereabouts were unknown, has been found in the sea at a depth of 90 meters and 55 kilometers from the Polish port of Wadislowowo. Nailed it, I think. Workers from the Petrobaltic Oil Company discovered the remains of the Graf Zeppelin, and it was not confirmed that the 262-meter-long wreck stranded on the seabed belonged to the warship whose launching was witnessed by Adolf Hitler himself itself in December 1938. The Graf Zeppelin never saw combat, although it's true that the 42 planes she was carrying on her deck did. Hitler's aircraft carrier was pushed into a corner during the war, overshadowed by the submarines, which the Third Reich considered more decisive for the development of the conflict. In April 1945, just days before the end of World War II, the Red Army seized the ship. From then on, what happened to the Graf Zeppelin is a mystery. The only thing we know for sure is that she was last seen in 1947. According to historians, there are three versions that can explain why the aircraft carrier ended up at the bottom of the sea. One is that she tripped over a mine. Another, that the Soviets overloaded it and did not withstand a storm in the Baltic. And the last one is that the Soviets themselves bombed and torpedoed it in a kind of combat maneuvers to practice. 
Number 17. HIJMS Musashi Japanese Battleship the Musashi was a battleship of the Imperial Japanese Navy during World War II. She was the second of the Yamato class, and along with her sister ship, Yamato, she was the heaviest and most heavily armed battleship ever built thanks to her 72,800-ton full-load displacement and her nine 460mm guns. Musashi sank after receiving an enormous punishment, 17 bombs and 19 torpedoes, which was followed by a huge underwater explosion. Out of a crew of 2,390 men, 1,023 died. The survivors were rescued by Japanese destroyers several hours later. In March 2015, U.S. billionaire Paul Allen, co-founder of Microsoft with Bill Gates and his team of researchers aboard the research yacht Octopus, located the bow of the ship at a depth of one kilometer in the Cebu Yan Sea in the center of the Philippine archipelago. Allen stated that the discovery came after an eight-year search using advanced technology to probe the seabed. The difficulty in finding the Japanese battleship lay in the belief that it had sunk in one piece and the inaccurate information given by the crew of the destroyers about its sinking site. Added to this was the abrupt orography of the seabed. The Musashi was found at a depth of 1,900 meters at the bottom of a slope of an underwater volcano. The virtual reconstruction of the remains by a team of Japanese experts with the videos obtained showed that the Musashi suffered a much higher punishment than previously thought. Number 16. P-40 Kitty Hawk a Curtis P-40 Kitty Hawk from the Royal Air Force was found in the western Egyptian desert in the region of Wadi al-Jadid by a Polish employee who was taking part in an exploration for the account of his oil business. On June 28, 1942, Sergeant Dennis Copping, aged 24 and belonging to the RAF's 260 Squadron, made a flight in the P-40 to transport it to another airbase so that it could be repaired. Contact with the plane was lost, and the pilot and aircraft were never found. According to some, the pilot had the opportunity to eject, and he didn't die during the crash, but he may have tried to walk out of the desert. The P-40 Kitty Hawk then remained almost intact and out of sight for nearly 40 years. According to the sources, the wreckage is in exceptional condition, the RAF badge still visible. Most of the instruments in the cockpit are said to be intact, as well as the armament which was removed by the Egyptian army for security reasons. But the question begs to be asked, how could this incredibly significant aircraft have survived all these decades in the desert untouched by anything but sand, sun, and wind? It's almost unbelievable. Number 15. USS Independence Aircraft Carrier a U.S. Ocean Agency led by the same guy that discovered the Titanic finally found the sunken wreckage of a World War II aircraft carrier, the USS Independence. It was found off the northern coast of California, and they said the vessel is surprisingly well-preserved, likely with one plane still in its hangars. The Independence, which operated in the central and western regions of the Pacific Ocean between November 1943 and August 1945, even survived the atomic tests of Bikini Atoll before being sunk in January 1951. The U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration found the carrier's intact hull amid a two-year mission to map some 300 wrecks in the waters off the city of San Francisco. After years on the seabed, Independence rests at the bottom as if it were about to launch its planes. The ship fought a long and hard war in the Pacific, and after the war, it was subjected to two atomic blasts that went right through the ship. The aircraft carrier's a reminder of the industrial power and skill of the great generation who sent not only this ship, but many of their loved ones to war. The USS Independence Carrier was found 790 meters underground by an underwater robot called the Echo Ranger, supplied to NOAA by Boeing. Number 14. Japanese I-400 Mega Submarine they announced the discovery of what was the largest submersible of World War II. The Mega Submarine was a Japanese secret weapon that the U.S. sank so it wouldn't fall into the hands of the Soviet Union. The images recorded by the U.S. Army documentarians allow us to appreciate how the fleet of Japanese submarines suffered the punishment of the cannons and bombs of the U.S. ships that used them as shooting targets. I-402 was targeted by artillery from the destroyer USS Larsen, an end that Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto did not imagine. The same 
same one who planned the attack on Pearl Harbor, who devised the construction of the I-402 and two other Sentoku-type submersibles, huge contraptions of more than 120 meters, to attack cities like New York. However, Tokyo strategists thought of using them to also attack the Panama Canal, an almost unthinkable action which would have required them to take a trip of almost two months and where the airplanes would become kamikazes. The exact whereabouts of the Sentoku became a mystery, until now. But back when they were sunk, they were the most advanced submarines in the world. The Americans sunk them deliberately to keep the Soviets from inspecting the vessels, something they had the right to do according to the military pacts of those days. Number 13. A Carrier Pigeon Stuck in a Chimney in 1982, David Martin and his wife Anne were renovating their 17th century fireplace in their home in Bletchingdale, England. The fireplace had been sealed for many years and the Martins wanted to restore it to its former glory. When they began to renew the protective lines of asbestos, they found another chimney of Victorian origin under it. Excited by the discovery, the Martins began to thoroughly clean the chimney because in all those years it had been a perfect home for the birds, which had filled it with dry twigs and different materials for their nests. But when all those branches were thrown away, some bird bones appeared among the remains. First a sternum, then a skull, and then a leg surrounded by an aluminum ring. The ring made them realize that the bones were not those of an ordinary bird, but that the animal had been trained as a racing bird. They continued to remove remains and found the second leg, which was hooked to a red plastic capsule. The red color of the capsule indicated that the bird had been nothing less than a carrier pigeon for the Allied forces in World War II. The only parts that were legible indicated the number of copies sent to. The copy brought by one of the pigeon's companions and the name of the sender, Sergeant W. Stott. Number 12. An Austrian Complex for Nazi Nuclear Weapons there are few things in this world more terrifying than the idea of Nazis having access to nuclear weapons. But as it turns out, the Nazis were only a few months away from obtaining the nuclear bomb and even carried out two successful tests. The existence of several test sites and laboratories proves it. These horrific places were used to prove the effectiveness of the new weapon and its impact on humans. Hundreds of prisoners of war, including Jews, were used as nuclear guinea pigs. The CIA also had reports from a spy who was in Austria in 1944 and who noted, in addition to the existence of several firing ranges, the entrance to a complex system of tunnels. Until now, however, no physical evidence of such work had surfaced, so the discovery of at least one of Hitler's nuclear laboratories is the final piece of corroborating evidence for the story. According to an Austrian journalist, the excavations began after excessive and apparently inexplicable levels of radioactivity were detected in an area of difficult access near the town of St. Gorgon an der Gusen, today in Austrian territory and part of Germany during the Third Reich. After removing several layers of earth and granite plates with which the entrances had been covered, a gigantic underground facility made up of several tunnels and full of evidence of its use by the Nazis appeared. That's just hands down terrifying. Number 11. Millions of Silver Coins from Ship Wreckage a British team has recovered from the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean 100 tons of silver coins valued at $50 million inside a steamship that sank during World War II. The cargo, belonging to the Ministry of Finance of the United Kingdom and destined to cover part of the expenses of the war, was on board the ship City of Cairo, which covered the route between Bombay, India, and England. However, the ship was sunk in 1942 by the impact of two torpedoes from a German submarine when she was 772 kilometers south of the island of St. Helena in the Atlantic Ocean. The remains of the city of Cairo, located at a depth of 5,150 meters, were found in 2011 and recovered in September 2013. But the British Ministry of Transport did not allow the rescue team, led by British John Kingsford, to make it public until recently. The city of Cairo, a passenger and cargo steamship, was not only carrying 100 tons of silver coins, but also 311 people. On November 6, 1942, off the island of St. Helena, the ship was hit by two German torpedoes that caused the ship to sink with all its cargo and caused the death of six passengers. Number 10. A Panther Tank Found in a Basement Garage 
In May 2021, a German court began the trial against an 84-year-old man accused of harboring an arsenal in the basement of his house, which includes a 40-ton Nazi Panther tank and an anti-aircraft gun. The arsenal was discovered in 2015 while the police were looking for a consignment of missing objects, including a bronze statue, also from the Nazi era, that the defendant had in his home. In addition to that object, the authorities found the Panther tank and the cannon, as well as dozens of pistols, assault rifles, and more than a thousand bullets. A few months before the extraction, the owner of the tank mentioned to German media that he had a collection in an underground bunker on his property. The removal of the tank drew the attention of a crowd of residents and spectators from the residential area of Heikendorf near the city of Kiel on the Baltic Sea coast. Everyone was stunned at the image of that Nazi tank. It took more than 20 German army soldiers, 9 hours, and 2 military cranes to get the 40-ton tank out of the 84-year-old man's basement. But everything didn't stop there, because they also had to extract the other Nazi military vehicle, the 88mm anti-aircraft gun, a type of item that you'd usually find in museums. Number 9. Desert Training Center Welcome to the California-Arizona Maneuver Area. It was a World War II training facility located in the Mojave Desert and Sonoran Desert and founded back in 1942. Its purpose was to train U.S. Army and Army Air Forces units and personnel to fight and live in the desert. They also tested and developed suitable equipment, tactical doctrines, techniques, and training methods. This place was a key training facility for all units that were engaged in combat in the North African Campaign, which occurred during the years 1942 and 1943. This simulated theater of operations was, and still is, the largest military training ground in the history of military exercises. A specific site near Shaver Summit between Indio and Desert Center was selected as the DTC headquarters. The site, called Camp Young, was the largest military post in the world at the time. Needless to say, these guys were not joking around. Major General George S. Patton Jr., the first commanding general of the DTC, and his advanced team designated several locations within the center where tent camps were built. The camps were located so that each unit could train individually without interfering with the other. This was a massive operation. Airfields, hospitals, supply depots, and locations for other support services were selected, as well as a core maneuvering area. Number 8. HMAS Sydney an Australian ship sunk during World War II after fighting a German ship has been found off the country's west coast. The Prime Minister affirmed in a press conference that the discovery of the HMAS Sydney solves the mystery about its location 66 years later, and they pointed out that the second enigma will be to know what happened in that fatal battle in which the two ships ended up at the bottom of the sea. The Sydney Findings Foundation, which has led the search, also located the German warship DKM Cormoran, which sank on November 19, 1941 after managing to sink the HMAS Sydney. The two ships had engaged in battle some 150 kilometers west of Shark Bay, a region inscribed on the World Heritage List in 1991 off the coast of Western Australia State. The DKM Cormoran was found about 240 kilometers west of Shark Bay, while the HMAS Sydney was found about 22 kilometers away from the German ship. None of the 645 men on board the HMAS Sydney survive, but 315 of the 397 crew members of the DKM Cormoran, which had disguised itself as a commercial vessel to enter Australian waters, were able to row their lifeboats to the mainland, where they were arrested. Number 7. Messerschmitt BF-109 the Messerschmitt Bf 109 was a German World War II fighter aircraft designed by a team led by Wilhelm Willi Emil Messerschmitt in the early 1930s, when he was the chief designer of the Bayerische Flugschiffwerke, hence the prefix Bf. Cut me some slack with the German. It was one of the first truly modern fighters of the time, including such features as an all-metal monocoque construction, enclosed cockpit, and retractable landing gear. Having undergone its baptism of fire in the Spanish Civil War, the BF-109 remained in service until the dawn of the jet age at the end of World War II, during which time it was the backbone of the Spanish Civil War force. With an inverted V-12 cylinder engine, the phenomenal Daimler-Benz DB-601, the BF-109 was supplemented but never completely replaced in service 
service by the focke Wolf FW-190 in 1949. The BF-109 was flown by the three most accomplished German aces of World War II, Erich Hartmann, Gerhard Backhorn, and Gunther Rahl, who scored some 928 victories between them while flying the Jagdesvada 52, mostly on the Eastern Front, as well as by the greatest German ace in the North African campaign, Hans Joachim Masse, also known as the Star of Africa. Through constant development, the aircraft remained competitive until the end of the war, being able to take on any of the Allied fighter aircraft. Number 6. Ghost Fleet of Truk Lagoon this is a submerged ghost army. Fighter planes, tanks, rail cars, motorcycles, torpedoes, bombs, ammunition boxes, ships, gas masks, a submarine, and human remains. In the Pacific and about 1,700 kilometers north of Guinea is located Laguna Truk, an atoll sheltered by coral that encloses a huge lagoon, which in times of World War II was chosen by the Japanese Navy as a natural harbor and a gigantic base of operations, sometimes referred to as the Gibraltar of the Pacific. In fact, it was then the main Japanese base of operations in the South Pacific. On February 17, 1944, the Americans launched an attack in which dozens of Japanese ships, planes, and all kinds of war materials ended up at the bottom of the lagoon. The site is today one of the Federated States of Micronesia, but the traces of colonialism and above all, the conflicts and that great battle are present both on land and under the sea. Truk Lagoon is the largest accessible graveyard of ships and submerged war remains in the world. No fewer than 60 Japanese ships and 275 aircraft rest underwater in what was the Japanese equivalent of Pearl Harbor. Truk Lagoon is a wreck-diving paradise, a unique sight to see numerous, almost intact, sunken ships, tanks, and aircraft scattered in crystal clear and calm waters less than 15 meters below the surface. Number 5. Air Raid Shelter after France's defeat in June 1940, Germany moved to gain air superiority over Britain as a prelude to the invasion of the island. During the infamous period that the Blitz was carried out, there were almost nightly German air raids on London. The city's civilian population sought shelter in bomb and air raid shelters. Some also had no other choice than to hide away in the London underground system. Despite months of air raids, Germany was unable to destroy Britain's Royal Air Force. In the fall of 1940, the invasion was postponed indefinitely. The German bombing campaign against Britain continued until May 1941. Finally, the Germans ended the air raids, mostly in preparation for the invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941. This is how air raid shelters saved millions of English civilians. They are structures made and designed for protection of the non-combatant population, as well as for combatants against enemy attacks from the air. They're rather similar to bunkers, although they're solely designed for air attacks and not so much for ground attacks like bunkers are. The UK built many shelters during World War II, including street communal shelters and indoor shelters that were designed to hold up to six people. Number 4. World War II Plane Crash Site Excavated in England the Hawker Hurricane was the Royal Air Force's first monoplane fighter. He particularly distinguished himself during the Battle of Britain during the Second World War. A total of 14,583 examples were built, used by several Allied air forces. It is one of the most iconic aircrafts of the Second World War, and one of them has recently been found by Winchester University students. The plane had crashed in 1940 in a Hampshire field, and now they've finally recovered the wreckage. Among the historical remnants of the Hawker Hurricane left behind by RAF recovery operations at the time are some elements of the cockpit instrumentation, a control column firing button, and also an identification plate which confirms this was Pilot Officer Hugh Desmond Clark's Hurricane Hawker N-2608. Thankfully, on the day of the crash, Clark had the time to bail out and parachute to safety before it was too late, although he left behind a harness release which was also recovered by the students. Clark is believed to have retired as a wing commander back in 1960. He has since passed away. Number 3. D-Day the code name was Operation Neptune. It was an Allied amphibious and airborne military operation of World War II launched on the night of June 5th to the 6th, 1944. 
This is the assault phase of a larger operation which aimed to create a large-scaled allied bridgehead in northwest Europe and to open a new front in the west. This landing marks the start of Operation Overlord, the codename for the Battle of Normandy. Operation Neptune included the American and British airborne operations during the night of June 6, as well as the predatory air and naval bombardments of the German coastal defenses, the crossing of the channel by several thousand ships, and finally, the landing of the troops on June 6. On D-Day, the Allies landed around 156,000 troops in Normandy, but the Germans were waiting and well prepared. Some say they had intel that the Allies were coming. It was a complete massacre for both sides. Allied troops suffered over 10,000 casualties. British and Canadian forces suffered around 3,700 casualties. U.S. forces had about 6,600 casualties. The German defenders lost between 4,000 and 9,000 men. Number 2. World War II Nazi Bunker Discovered Inside 1,700-Year-Old Roman Fort a team of archaeologists has discovered a German World War II bunker built inside the remains of a Roman tower. The spectacular find is located in a convent located on the island of Alderney, one of the British archipelagos located in the English Channel. Experts pointed out that Alderney Friary is the site of one of the best-preserved Roman forts in Britain. In addition, the building was used by the German military during the occupation of the Channel Islands, which are the English archipelagos located west of Normandy in France. Jason Monahan, the archaeologist in charge of the excavation, assured that the team of experts discovered the detail of how the Nazi soldiers placed the fortification exactly inside the three-meter-thick stone walls. The convent, which was occupied for some 1,700 years, contains the remains of various structures built on top of each other from different historical periods. Although in 2011 it was confirmed that the archaeological site began in Roman times, it also has buildings made in the Middle Ages and others made by the Tudors and Napoleon Bonaparte. In World War II, the 7.8 square kilometer island of Alderney was controlled by the German military from 1940 to 1945, though its time the entire population was evacuated prior to Nazi occupation. Number 1. Diver Discovers World War II Plane Wreck With Bodies At Bottom Of Lake An amateur diver made the discovery of his life while he was diving at Lake Simon in the Outaway region in Quebec. The diver claims that this is the wreckage of a plane that could possibly date back to World War II. The provincial police force sent down their own diver who took photographs, and he captured a mass that could resemble an airplane which could have been down there for a very long time. Now, the Canadian National Army is, of course, also doing some investigative work on their side. The man that made this astonishing discovery is named Mark Sarazen, and he's a resident of Papineau. He claims to have stumbled upon the wreckage while he was collecting wood from the bottom of the water for his work. He added that he's been diving at Lake Simon for years, and he never suspected that a historical item of such importance could be hiding there under the water. He also claims to have spotted more than one body and kerosene barrels on the plane, as well as at least six propellers and over 150 chests. As they may contain hazardous materials, the Army will have to deal with that situation. In addition, he also believes the plane to be a Latacore 631 type seaplane based on his observations alone. As you can see, even a war that happened such a long time ago can still be a source of new findings and information. What about you? Do you have any family stories to share about that time? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!